In the middle of his freshman year at Yale, Travis Reginald wrote a poem entitled Mother Father, which his mother did not know about until she read it on Sunday in the New York Times. In the poem, Travis rewrites the words thank you into a deeper expression of his gratitude to his mother, Nikki Reginald, and he finds the words I love you inadequate because as he says in the poem, the only way he could really express his love for his mother is if he were to place his beating heart in her palms. The last word is proud to present the first public reading of Mother Father by the poet. Joining me again is Travis Reginald. Travis, go ahead. I wake up at three in the morning with the pile of work I haven't touched and deadlines that stay in the daunting skyscrapers. And I think about you, mother. I'm reminded of how at the end of each conversation, there are this awkward pause. Well, neither one of us can find the strength to say I love you. It's not that I don't, but rather the only way I can express the way I feel is if I was to place my beating heart in your palms. I remember being in the airport at the beginning of my freshman year in college. Suitcase full of insecurities and doubts with a pocket full of literary tricks up my sleeve and a penchant for smiling my way through everything. But that day, gratitude didn't have enough room in my chest. Nothing can stop the levees in my eyes from breaking. Tears that resemble waterfalls spilled your name on my cheeks and stained my plane tickets. No, this feeling has to be more than love because words will never be enough to describe a woman whose life is like the first meal in the wild for a starving child. Mom, you don't give yourself enough credit. You were 15 with a lifetime of dreams tucked away in that precious head of yours. And some, some smooth talking guy whispered empty promises, took your dreams away as if you were doing your favor, and gave you a child as a parting gift. Dad, if I would have known that moment was the closest you would ever be to me and my mother, I would have forgiven you at conception. But little did I know you had aborted me in your mind, and little did I know that no matter how hard I tried or how far I hit myself in another reality as a child, that eventually you would cross my mind again. Every time I see another boy playing with his father, every time I shave and realize that it shouldn't take this long, or every time I tie my tie, and it's slightly out center because I watched that tie, How to Tie a Tie video too many times for my liking and I didn't have anyone to show me how. It's a sad day indeed. We have to Google search how to be a man. I tried to make myself visible, make it impossible for you to ignore me, do whatever it took to make a headline somewhere. I made sure I worked to be the top of my class in the hope you'd hear my graduation speech broadcast across TV. Like, I even ran track, because I would heard you're pretty fast in high school, and if I want something, that would just give us something in common beside our first names. But mother, I don't want this to be another sob story. I want you to remember that we live every God-given moment to the fullest of what we had, we love permanent footprints on shores where everything else is washed away. I don't see life as a struggle, just as an opportunity to show what we're made of. So let's take memories past and write them on the face of giants so the world can see. Mother, I will toast to your heartbeat that I hear in my dreams at night. It's a rhythm of hope and vitality that I never want to stop moving to.